Um, the next question comes from Darcy Rowland, who wants to switch topics a little bit and talk about the military. Uh, Darcy, are you able to chime in with your question? I am. Thank you, Terry. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Reed. Hi, so, Darcy. I've got two questions and then kind of an example to summarize. So mm -hmm. um, my question, and I, I'm asking because I feel like this needs to have some external pushing for the military. Mm -hmm. Is there any push to uh, encourage or have the military do anti-racism training? And also to um, start including, especially with senior leadership, um, reviewing social media profiles as an extension of the person as opposed to just um, uh, their, their, their qualifications. And yeah. the reason I'm asking this is because I, I am retired military. I worked for about nine years at the Senior mm -hmm. Enlisted Academy. And I have a lot of friends who are still active duty military, and I see a lot of posts that I would call a benevolent, but leaning towards racist or biased posts. And I'll, I'll give an example. There's a lot of military people who very, through social media, express their, their, their hate and discontent for kneeling for the flag. And reason this causes a problem in my eyes is because if you have a person who is black or brown who works for you and then they know your views on this issue if they view colin kaepernick as their hero and you go to a, a social function they can't wear their jersey and now they've got to conform with what the ideology is of their leader and it creates a problem and the leaders don't realize that it's actually an issue because they see it as supporting the flag not necessarily anything else. So that's really, you know, what I, I, I would be curious from a congressional level if there's right. any push, because I feel like that's where the, the, the push needs to come from. And I see the Air Force is doing a lot of work, but I haven't seen a lot from all the other services. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. And uh, I served on active duty from 1967 to 1979. And the issues there were even more uh, stark and relevant because that was an era where the civil rights movement in the United States was, was, was taking hold. And uh, so we saw um, from that day to the day, there's been progress, but not enough. Let me uh, point out too that, you know, there, there are some hopeful signs. Uh, General Brown, the chief of staff of the Air Force, the first uh, chief of staff of any service in the history of the United States to be uh, an individual of color. Uh, he's a very talented former commander of the Pacific Air Force. He came in. The other thing, too, I think it was notable, too, is what, after the Floyd killing in Minnesota, the uh, command sergeant major of the Air Force, an African-American, wrote an incredibly moving and um, very, very, very strong sort of a statement about race, not just in the society, but in the military. So we're beginning to see literally, more visibly, concern about this issue that you so adroitly pointed out, because it's subtle, it's there, it's always there. Secretary Esper, the Secretary of Defense, about two or three weeks after the Floyd killing, issued a Defense Department Secretary guidelines about race and about uh, racial uh, you know, behavior, et cetera. But the point you make is, is really a, a very good point, and that is this social media, because there's now, unlike my days, back in the, the good old days when it was all just in the, bar you know, in the barracks and shooting the breeze, now on social media you have uh, individuals who are involved with uh, groups that are not exactly supportive of racial equality or they're, you know, they're saying things that are uh, unfortunate and they're being, you know, being read by others uh, you know, and that's causing a problem. So I will bring this idea of social media back to the, to the Department of Defense folks. I think it's an excellent one. Uh, but to your point, uh, there is, I think, a constant recognition that as much as they do, they don't do enough. And I think the, the best, again, the best evidence of at least the most visible evidence 
is that we're beginning to make some progress is you're beginning to see now uh, the very, very senior levels of uh, general officers and senior sergeant, sergeant majors of color. And that's probably the best thing you can do. Uh, uh, so it's an excellent point and I'll follow up. Thank you very much.